Okay. All right. Welcome, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, we may saw some glitches, but we're going to work through it, okay? Either way, we're recording this from the Ruth Keeler Memorial Library. Uh, so if you missed part of it or you missed the first last half or something happens, just check it out in the Ruth Keeler Memorial Library. Uh, you go up to the Facebook page and the iTunes or YouTube, YouTube page, and you click on that, and they'll show all the uh, online courses that we offer. All right, remember we're recording, so if you don't want to be recorded your voice, just mute yourself, okay? If you have any questions, send them into the chat. Mm -hmm. They need to mute themselves because else they'll pop up on the recording and they'll get recorded. Yes, go ahead and mute yourself as well. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do today is the Indian um, coconut uh, shrimp curry. Uh, I'm all confused now. Um, we're going to do that. We're also going to do a rice to go with it. Um, I've done a tutorial before on rice pilaf. But I'm going to go over it again today because I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to do it with a basmati type rice, and it's going to be like I'm going to toast the rice to give it a little bit more of a nutty flavor, even though it has a natural nutty flavor. Uh, I'm going to give it a little nutty flavor, so it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to start off today by letting you know to put your oven on 350 Fahrenheit, please. Uh, make sure there's plenty of room for your pot to go in your rack. Uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of a deep pot today just because this is the only other pot I have. Uh, with the quarantine to get into my pots um, that can fit uh, the rice and the other pot I have for this conduction burner uh, is smaller for the sauce, okay? So you want to go ahead and put your pot or your pan on for your rice on like low or medium low because we're going to get it hot enough to toast the rice off, okay? While that's warming up, I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to go ahead and cut my onion for my rice, all right? It's about this much of an onion, like about a fourth of a cup. And I'm gonna cut it, I'm not throwing it into the pot, I'm gonna throw it right back into here, okay? Now remember when we're doing the onion, we, the lines are a good measure here. You cut, like that to the half, turn it to its side. And sometimes people are a little afraid to cut their fingers, so I make little long lines against this, like half moons, turn it this way. I'll turn it this way, you can see it. And then I come across. And you can make a grid and cut them like the way we did in cooking school. But I find that people have a problem doing that and they're afraid they're gonna cut their fingers. So I find this a little bit easier to cut the uh, onion for people. Try to keep it simple, okay? All right, if you feel like they're a little big, you can go across them one more time. Okay. This is for our rice. And that's about a fourth of a cup. Right in there. Our, um, when we do pilaf rice, we we'll put it right into the pot, but in this case, we're not. All right, I'm just gonna get that ready. We're gonna get our bay leaf ready. Our stock is getting nice and hot. You can use vegetable stock, you can use chicken stock. Uh, depending if you're a vegetarian, I like to use chicken stock to give the rice a better flavor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two tablespoons of olive oil. We may need a little more, we're gonna see. We're gonna put it right into our pot. There. The spatula, get all that. And there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn mine up to medium. Might get a little noisier, okay? And then I'm gonna do my two cups of basmati. I'm gonna let that get a little hot. I wanna see the oil quivering before I even think it's hot, okay? So last time we did rice, I used jasmine rice. So this is the thing. Jasmine rice is kind of like, it's, it orients from, it uh, comes from Thailand mainly. It is, it is grown in different areas in Asia, but it's mainly in from Thailand. It is a long grain rice. So this is a basmati and it's a long grain rice as well. Short grain rices are used more like for sushi. So this is a long grain rice. So with jasmine rice, uh, it's more sweet and nutty, and, but it'll clump up more. It'll clump up more after it's cooked and the grain will be a little bit more plumpy. It has less starch in it, so that's why it will clump up more, and it, it's a better rice to use if you're gonna use chopsticks. Uh, with basmati, it stays a little bit more loose, um, and that's the difference with it. Now, basmati is made more like in the Himalayas, India, Pakistan, and so it, um, it actually translates into um, very aromatic or very fragrant is the name of basmati. And so it's used more in those areas, and it has a more a stronger, more nutty flavor. And because we're gonna toast it, we're gonna bring out those aromatic 
flavors and senses, you're gonna be able to smell it in the air. So our rice now, I put one kernel in there and you see it kind of frying up. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour my rice in there, okay? Get on the all that there. And I'm gonna use a silicone spatula, burn, and I'm gonna stir it up real good. And I'm gonna turn my heat up. And normally I use a pan that's a little bit more spread out than this, but because I'm using an induction burner, um, I have to use certain pots for this with magnets. And this is the only big pot I have with magnets. Um, my other one I'm gonna use for sauce, okay? So you'll see that my, my rice is nice and coated, it's shiny. So that's about two tablespoons. So that's, you know, you don't wanna get too oily, but you do want it to get nice and coated. Now, I'm gonna turn this up to high because I wanna start getting it toasted. Now, we want it to get a little bit color on it, but we don't wanna burn it, okay? I'm gonna get that going. And um, I can smell, I can hear it sizzling. And what we're gonna do is when it gets almost ready, we're gonna put in our onion. The difference between we make the peel off, we sweat the onion first, then we put in the you know, the rice with the hot stock, okay? This way we're toasting it up first. So while that's toasting, I'm actually gonna transfer myself over here and we're gonna talk about the marinade, okay? So I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Should, so you, can, should you continually stir or leave to sit with good oil? You wanna see where it starts to turn colors. And as you can come in here, you see some of it getting white and I'll pull some up. So some of it's starting to turn white because it's starting to toast. I don't know if you can see that right there. So because I have mine on pretty high, it's gonna start toasting pretty fast. And you can smell it. It almost smells like popcorn in a way, but you don't want it to burn. You just want to get some cover. You don't have to continuously stir it. But because I don't have a very wide pot, I'm trying to make sure that it, you know, gets coated. But you'll see some of them are turning white right there. And I used a dark spatula so you could see the difference in it. But as soon as I'll, I'm gonna try, it's going pretty fast, so I'm gonna try to stay here instead of move on to the marinade. But our rice takes 20 minutes, so I wanna make sure it's done before rough. See, it's starting to have more white in there. I'm trying to see if I can find some with brown. So it's starting to turn. And uh, when I make my Spanish or Mexican rice, this is the same thing, I toast my rice up because I wanna make sure it has a nice uh, nutty flavor to it. So I see some kernels getting brown. I want them to burn. It's a lot easier to do when you have a flat, you know, a more wider pan. Yeah, I see that too. I have mine on high. You don't want to burn it. Because once you burn it, it has a bitter flavor to it. And that's what we're not looking for bitter. We're just looking for toasty and nutty flavor. It smells so good. All right, I see some brown coming on. There's some like brown right there. Can you see the brown? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You can almost tell in the, in the smell how far to go. And like I said, it starts to smell like popcorn. You want to smell like burnt popcorn. All right. So I have mine getting, I got some kernels getting brown. I'm trying to find a bunch of them so I can show you at one time. Oh yeah, here's some brown ones. See how those have brown on them? And that tells us we're good to go. I'm gonna lower to medium so that I don't splash myself with the liquids I'm gonna put in here. So at this point, I'm gonna put in my onion. In there. I'm gonna give it a stir. You're gonna hear it sizzle. And because it's all nice and toasted and dry, it's gonna absorb that onion flavor really good, okay? All right. You don't wanna keep it on high because it'll burn the oven, so I have it on medium now. It's going to, I might get that onion flavor real good. It smells so good. And then you wanna work with hot stock. All right, now I'm gonna put my hot stock in. I already have it pre-measured. Basmati, it's a one to two, so I have two cups of rice. I have two cups of rice and I've used a dry measuring container for or measuring cup to four cups of liquid. And that's you use your liquid measuring cup. Okay. It's hot, it's boiling. This is why 
I use a deep one sometimes. This is gonna splatter. All right, now come on in. There you go. Now, yours may take longer to come to a boil than mine because I'm using an induction burner, but you want it to come up to a boil, like a really roaring boil. And I have my bay leaf, which, by the way, bay leaf, you touch your tongue to it, tastes bitter, tastes horrible, but it gives the rice a very good flavor. Again, it's about aromatics. It's gonna go right in there. Don't break it up because it's gonna float to the top as it's cooking. So when it's ready, we just use a fork and re remove it. If you crush it up, you're gonna have it all in your rice. It's gonna be ugh, not good, okay? I'm now boiling. I'm gonna give it one last stir just to make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. I'm gonna give it a pinch of black pepper. Yeah, a little bit here. There you go. Is it boiling? Mm -hmm. There you gotta boil. You're gonna put a top on it. It's gonna go into a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes at a timer. Here we go. Hopefully that's on. Like mom, it's ticking. All right, we got our timer on. All right, so we're gonna move over here and we're gonna take care of our marinade. So remember what I talked about with marinades. You wanna use a glass bowl. Okay, because we're going to be dealing with lemon juice here. You don't want the, uh, the shrimp to pick up any flavor, flavor on a metallic bowl. So we're going to start with a glass bowl. We're going to start with our one-fourth a teaspoon of kosher salt. Please use kosher salt because, you know, kosher salt brings out flavors and things. It draws out flavors out of the shrimp, out of meats. So I hardly ever, ever use iodized salt, it's much stronger, okay? We're gonna use a fourth of a teaspoon of black, fresh black pepper for our marinade. And I put in the recipe to use a fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I actually didn't have any cayenne pepper, so I'm improvising and using chili powder, which kind of works for me because cayenne pepper is a little hot for me. But if you like heat, go with the cayenne pepper. This is a chili powder, so it'll work just as well, okay? Let's put that in there. Spatula, pop that out, and then we're gonna get our lemon juice. Already freshly squeezed it. Two tablespoons of the lemon juice. I'm gonna go in here, and I got my whisk. Whisk it in. And then we're going to put a raw shrimp, which has been peeled and deveined. And if you've defrosted it, please remove all liquid from it. I drained this one really well. Okay, it's gonna go right in. There. I'm gonna use my hand, I'm gonna change gloves could in just a minute. Could you substitute lime juice if you prefer it? Yes, you could. You absolutely could. And if you don't, by any chance, if you don't have any lime or lemon juice and you're like, I don't wanna run to the store, Find a vinegar with some type of, you may have like an orange citrus vinegar. Worst case scenario, you could use apple cider vinegar. Um, you could use that. But I would say if you're going to use the vinegar, um, just keep an eye on it. You don't want it to go too far and cook it, okay? This is a lemon juice. So I'm coating it very well, okay? And then I'm going to transfer, I'm going to leave it here. And I'm going to take my glove off because it has shrimp in it. And I'm going to cover it with plastic. And you can put it in the refrigerator for like 10 minutes or you can leave it out because we're gonna cook it in just a little bit. But if you were at home and you're gonna do other things um, and you know, it's just too hot or something, you could put it in the refrigerator for 10 minutes or so. I'm just gonna put, set my right aside. I'm sealing it because I don't like the smell of shrimp too much in here. So we're gonna just set it aside right here and it's gonna marinate. All right, so we have our marinade going. Now we're gonna work on the components for our sauce. So now, uh, with curry powders and sauces like this, you know, curry powder, uh, it's made of different things. It's got turmeric, it's got chili powder, it's got, uh, you know, dried uh, ginger, pepper, and coriander. 
Um, the thing about it we have to realize is there's a difference between Grand Marsala and there's curry powder. Grand Marsala has a lot more like cinnamons, cloves, a lot more what we would call like things that we use for baking in American culture. So there's a difference between Grand Marsala and curry, all right? Curry is a little bit more hot. It comes like in mild, medium, hot, super hot. You know, you really buy it like in one of those stores where you sell it like in a container and you sell it by the pound. So you gotta be really careful. Um, I do love the smell of curry powder even more than I like the flavor. Grand masala, that's not my favorite spice selection, but it works with certain recipes, especially when you're dealing with Indian and you know Far East food, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have all of our components ready for the sauce, because once we get going, you don't have time to be measuring. So right now I have my one tablespoon of coconut oil. It's kind of in a semi-solid state, and that's okay, because we're gonna melt it in the pan. All right, so I have that going first. I'm gonna go ahead and- How many is this recipe served? How many of these people is this recipe served? I, I have it for about a pound of, um, a pound of shrimp, so, most of the time, it could be like for two or three people, depending on how much shrimp the person eats. I mean, these are extra large shrimp, so I would say that's enough at least for two or three people. Um, it just depends on how much you want to serve your party or family. Okay, I have my sauce pot here because we're gonna put a lot of liquids. Instead of using a, a large flat one because we have so many liquids, I need a little bit deep. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on medium and start. While I go ahead and I'm gonna cut some more onion because we're gonna need some more onion. Um, let's talk about uh, the tomatoes. I mean, you can use fresh tomatoes for this recipe. I unfortunately used my fresh tomatoes last night that my neighbor so nicely gave to me. I used for, I used for uh, pico de gallo at the salsa last night. So I'm going to go ahead and improvise and use some canned tomato, which is fine. If in fact you're using fresh tomato, just dice it and cut it with seeds, the inners, the juice, try to preserve as much as possible because that's what makes the sauce. If you're using can, don't drain it. Use the whole thing, okay? Um, and it, I don't really think it makes that much of a difference in the flavor, to be honest with you. So, you know, because sometimes you can make curry and the tomatoes won't be in season. But if you have the tomatoes, use your fresh tomatoes. I would say go for it. All right, so we're going to cut our onion. I'm going to show you the other way to cut the onion. And this is like you grab it, you go across to make like a grid. So you make some slices this way, and then you come across in this direction. And you turn it, and you can. You can use a kitchen knife. I find sometimes with a serrated knife, I have a little bit more control getting closer to my hand. Okay, and then I have onion. I'm gonna put it right here. There. The sauce. And my onion was pretty big, so I don't think I need the whole thing, but I'm gonna cut a little bit more. Just a little bit. Across here. <laughs> Uh, you know, you get in a pinch. Uh, I've even been in particular places where uh, I've had to use frozen diced onions and it worked. So if that's the case or whatever. And right now there's a recall on onions. So please be careful to check your onions, everyone, to make sure you don't fall into that recall. I don't want anyone to get sick. It's kind of a terrible thing to happen. That's going to be plenty for my sauce. All right, we're ready now. All right, so we have our onion. Got that ready. And then we're gonna have our like, three cloves of ginger. Uh, and we have one tablespoon of, I'm sorry, this one tablespoon of ginger and two of garlic or three cloves is about two tablespoons of garlic. Okay, we have that first. Let's take care of that. So we have our pot warming here. Gonna get our coconut oil in there. If you don't have coconut oil, just go with something very mild, like uh, you know, olive oil. I don't go with anything like peanut or anything like that. I'm gonna lower that down. 
Onion garden. Onion garden. Got it. It's eight. All right. Add there, buddy. Okay. So it smells good. Onion. I've even used coconut oil with my basmati rice, and it gives it a nice flavor too. So we have coconut oil. Now be careful. I'm going to put in the, the onion to sweat. Now remember when we're doing onions and sweating. It is a wet cooking method, okay? We want to make sure we don't burn the onion. We're not trying to get color on the onion. We're trying to get the liquid to come out of it, okay? So I'm going to coat it really well with the olive, I mean with the coconut oil. Good. And then I'm going to put the top on. It. Oh, so good. Okay. All right. So we have a top on it. We want it to sweat. All right. Now let's get back here. In just a minute, we're going to add the ginger and the garlic to that. Shouldn't take, but we just wanted to get translucent, okay? All right. Now we have our garlic and our ginger. And then we're going to get our salt and pepper ready. I always put a pinch in that of the salt just to get the juices to come out of the onions. Um, we have now our two teaspoons of ground coriander. If you don't have ground coriander, you can put it in a small little um, uh, food processor and it can grind up to that in case you don't want to run and get some. And then we have our curry powder. Now the curry powder, it almost smells like perfume. It's so, so good. I love it. Okay, so we have all that going. Let's check on our onions. Sweating. Not translucent just yet. Like strong onions, right? A little more. And then we're going to add the garlic in another minute or so. Okay, so I'm going to come right over here while that's cooking. I'm going to get our last item. Now, you can choose whether you want cilantro or you want parsley. I happen to have part, I mean, cilantro, so I'm going to do cilantro. You can choose to either garnish with it or finish off your sauce with it. I like to cut mine and then put some in the sauce, but then when I plate it up, I like to sprinkle a little bit on there, okay? So remember what we did last time. This has been rinsed. You can use the stems on cilantro parsley, and it's very commonly done in um, with Asian or Middle Eastern food, okay? It gives it a lot of flavor, and it does add a little bit more texture to that. Okay, so we have translucent onions now. See that? No brown on them. They are not sauteed. They are sweated, okay? We have that. We're going to now add our ginger and our garlic. So there's our ginger. Garlic. Ginger and both of And we discussed last week how to cut your, your ginger. Hopefully everybody kind of knows how to do that now. And if you don't want to deal with the fresh ginger, using the squeezed ginger is just fine too. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. All right. I'll sweat that a little bit more. Now, let's talk about the spices again. Uh, certain spices are what they call oil soluble, soluble, not water soluble, which means they bring out more flavor, dissolve much better in oil than they do with water. So when that's the case, most of the time it's like chili powders, cumin, in this case curry, it's better to, when you first add them into your dish, they need to go into something that has oil in it before you put your water in it. I don't know if that makes sense because again, they're gonna help dissolve better or they're also going to uh, release their flavors much better into oil than they are with water. They're gonna actually kind of repel. So in this case, we're gonna add all these spices in first before we add our liquids in, okay? So now we've got some noise going on here. All right, let's give it a stir because we don't want it to brown. Just want it to sweat. All right. Now we're gonna put in our salt, our pepper, black pepper. Coriander, a turmeric, which adds a real pretty color and flavor, kind of mustardy. And then we have the curry powder. Okay. All right. Now we're going to stir those and make sure it gets real colored really good because that coconut oil in there 
is going to help it start. Ooh, it smells so good. Release its flavors. What are some water soluble ones? Um, off the top of my head, cinnamon is one because when you're baking and stuff, it's really good cinnamon. Um, let me think about some other ones. Uh, mustard and cardigan's another one. Cardamom is another one. Okay, so let that sweat a little bit there while we talk about coconut milk. What about oregano? Oregano is an herb, so you want to always put that at the very end so it doesn't burn. You'll see you can the mix here. This is the coconut milk. At the very bottom, you'll see the coconut water. So when you buy coconut water bottled or in a can, that's what they're selling to you. The top part here is what they call the cream of the coconut milk. We're going to stir this really good before we put this in, okay? So that's one can of that. I'm going to stir it good. I'm going to get my spoon. We want to stir that really good. So the cream's in the top. It kind of looks like not good. We want it to be nice and creamy. All right, now that I've got it stirred nice and good, and this has had time to work with the oil, it's very aromatic, smells so good. We're going to pour that in. And it's also good to put the, the coconut milk first because again, coconut milk has fat and it's gonna help all this dissolve and make a really good emulsion for your sauce, okay? So we're gonna let that heat up a little bit before we add our tomatoes in there. You can't see it well on this camera, but it's a yellow color. It's yeah, it's white. like a nice yellow color. It's, it's getting there. It's gonna turn a little bit because we're gonna put the we're gonna put the tomatoes in there. These are our tomatoes. It's coming up to a boil. We wanna make sure it comes to a little boil before we put the tomatoes in there. Meanwhile, I got my parsley here. You got parsley or your parsley or your cilantro, whichever you wanna use. And I'm gonna go ahead and just chop it off while we're doing that. Keep it really tight. Remember, the more you chop it, the darker it's gonna get and blacker it's gonna get. It does help when you wear gloves because one, it saves your finger from being cut. It also helps you keep the, the cilantro parsley really tight in your hand without losing it. Just turn it one time to the side, cross it. And I'm gonna put it right here on the side. Leave it there for our season. Okay, it's coming up. Doing good. All right. Now, now I always like to try for people to taste things. So I want you to taste it before you put the tomato in to see how the flavors are going to marry. So we're going to taste it. It actually tastes really good, but then I want you to taste it afterwards so you can taste the difference between why the tomato adds the acidity to it. It kind of balances it out. So try tasting that. And I'm going to, well, it's coming to a boil. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's add that in there. Tomatoes. Remember, like I said, if you're cutting your own fresh ones, add the inners, everything, after you dice it, the liquid and everything, okay? After it comes up to a boil, we'll taste it again because we want all the flavors to marry, okay? And I don't want to add my cilantro and parsley until the end if you are going to add it to the sauce. I like to sprinkle some on the top of it too, so we'll see how that goes or whatever. All right. 
uh, we, uh, about another minute on our rice, and it may be a little more, so we're gonna see. Let's go over here and take a look at our shrimp. And let me get this taken away for a second. And let's take a look. All right, you see our rot, what, uh, what the lemon does to it? You see the difference in the color? <coughs> trying to basically almost cook it in a way but what it does also it makes it moist and tender okay so you don't want to put the shrimp too far in advance into the liquid because then you're going to overcook your shrimp it'll become tough so um, what i mentioned to a friend of mine was is that if i was going to make the sauce the day before but i wasn't going to use it till tomorrow I would actually not do the marinade everything to the shrimp until the day of when I was going to do it, make my sauce ahead of time, and then maybe before I was going to serve it, put the shrimp in uh, like 20 minutes before so that I'm only warming the shrimp up one time. When you warm shrimp up, it gets a little rubbery. And you know, you don't want such a good curry, you don't want to ruin it with, you know, with the shrimp like that. I've also done it, but my shrimp, my sauce is coming up to a boil. I've also done it to where, um, I've, you know, cooked the shrimp in a separate pan and used a little bit of the sauce and deglazed it and threw it all in too. So we're up to a boil. Now we're going to taste this. Extra spoon. Here's an extra clean spoon. Blow on it because it's hot. Oh, that's good. Now, some people like the sauce thicker. If you want it thicker, you can add a little tomato sauce. You can add like a, a cornstarch slurry to it. Depending on how you like it, you want it you know, a little thicker, okay? So it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Tomato sauce will make it thicker. A little, maybe like a teaspoon of tomato paste will help make it thicker. So only it depends on how you like it. Some people like it thin because like, like a soup to pour it over their rice. So it depends on how you like it. If we, I'm gonna cook this in just a little bit longer. I'm gonna add the shrimp to it. If I still think it's a little loose, I'll show you how to do the cornstarch slurry, okay? So I'm gonna add my shrimp now. Okay. I'm gonna add my shrimp and I'm gonna add the liquid and all, okay? Still boil. Stir. And I'm going to show you how to make a cornstarch slurry. Right. We'll let that cook. We're going to put a timer on this for about three to four minutes. I got a timer here. About three minutes, and we'll check the, the shrimp in there. Okay? I'm going to put a top on it and let it go. Okay, so we're going to come over here. Let's mess up a little bit. Now, the timer went off. Our rice is ready. So I'm going to show you our rice here. It's come out of the oven. We've poured it onto parchment paper like we did in our rice pilaf episode and onto a sheet tray so it helps cool it a little bit faster. I'm going to show you with the fork. You always move rice around with a fork, not a spoon. Okay, our bay leaf went to the top. We're going to just remove it. It's going to go to the trash. You're gonna see there. So with the basmati, it separates a lot better than the, when you do jasmine, the jasmine kind of clumps up and it's easier to use when you're gonna use chopsticks. This is eaten more in, in the Indian and Pakistani region, they use basmati. Um, it has a little bit of a sweet flavor, but the jasmine rice has much of a sweeter flavor, okay? So I'll leave that there. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a cornstarch slurry. I'm going to take about a tablespoon of cornstarch right in there. You always put the cornstarch first, and you're just going to eyeball it. You're going to use a spoon. Slowly incorporate a little bit of water. You want this slurry, which a slurry means is what it's going to help thicken your sauce. It should be the thickness of like heavy cream, not like water. So do a really good stirring before you decide to put it in there, okay? Get the corners really good because it kind of feels thick and chalky right now. And until you mix it all, you won't know if you need just to drip more water. See how this is chalky? I just need a 
much more. There is no really recipe. You have to learn how to eyeball this, okay? Now turn my slurry down. All right, turn my curry down. All right, now it's gotten looser. See how loose it is? Yeah, Ubla. Huh? Ubla. 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 Look at that thing. It's like slime, but it's where you, if, Oh, no, no. Hold when, on. You, when you keep it in motion, it's hard, but then it's the liquid right now. Yeah. So it's a liquid, but it's about the density of heavy cream when you're putting in your coffee. But it's thicker than water. So that's what we're going to use to thicken this sauce up, okay? All right. So let's take a look at our sauce. Yummy. All right. How of our shrimp? Our shrimp nice and pink, which means they're... Pretty close to ready there. Now, in order to use a slurry, your liquid has to be up to a very high, almost a boil, okay? You usually take it off the heat. I'm gonna put it right here on a, like a cooling rack. Take it off the heat or turn your burner off, one of the two, and you're gonna slowly incorporate. And I guess, Slowly incorporate the slurry. And that was about a tablespoon worth for this, okay? I'm gonna bring it back to the heat. The only way you know the slurry is gonna work is you gotta bring it back up to a boil. Steam. You have to bring it back up to a boil for it to get its true thickening power, okay? Kinda like the roux. All right, so we're gonna bring it back up to temp. And it's thickening, I can tell right away because my burner is you know, a fast burner. So it's definitely thicker, see? It doesn't look as soupy. And it'll thicken it just a little bit more. Now it's coming up to a boil, so it's boiling. I'm gonna make sure I get everything off the bottom. And now it's more thick. That looks more like a real nice good curry. You don't want to get it too thick because then, you know, it's not going to pour nicely over your rice, okay? So once you put the slurry in, you want to let it go for at least a minute before, you know, you know it's, it definitely has worked and it, it make sure it's not tasty tasty. Now I'm going to taste this. I'm going to taste this. Mm, that's good. I think mine could use a touch of salt. And I'm gonna turn it off, touch the salt. I'm gonna put my cilantro in there because I like mine in my sauce because I think it brings it a flavor when it's been sitting in there. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, got that there. Now, we're gonna plate it up over here. We have our plate. Take a little rice. And some of you can see some of the toasted ends on it, which is nice, good because it shows. You took your really good time toasting that. Like that. And then we're gonna add our curry. Toss here. Pretty that is. Ugh, love those colors. Take a little bit more of the parsley. Oh, sorry. Or cilantro, whichever you use. I'm using cilantro, but you can use parsley. Whatever you got in your garden or in your fridge. And look how beautiful it is. Uh-uh-uh. Love it. And there you go. So, hope you enjoyed it. Um, any questions? I can probably answer right here for you. If not, uh, feel free to, you can email me at chefrizzo at hotmail.com. I would love to answer any questions. Just letting you know that uh, for the month of September, we're taking a break off and we will be resuming uh, Zoom uh, culinary literacy classes starting in October, November, and possibly December. We're gonna be tackling some of your worries for the holidays, how you can make some shortcuts and tips for your holiday cooking, uh, maybe doing some decorating of cookies and things. Uh, so we're going to mix it up again for the fall. We're going to probably be doing some soups and stews. I would like to share some quick tips that I have that I use for the fall to put things in the freezer for soups and stews and chilies. Um, again, I'm glad you're 
looked in and checked in to see what we're doing. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoy your coconut shrimp curry. Thanks for tuning in.